ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار brothers and sisters in islam اخرج الامام مسلم في صحيحه من حديث عبد الله ابن عمر ابن العاص رضي الله عنهما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا متاع وخير متاعها الزوجه الصالحه the hadith is compiled في صحيح الامام مسلم the narrator is the companion Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with both of them the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says ad-dunya mata' the worldly life is an enjoyment temporary one and the best enjoyment of all the enjoyments which you may find in this worldly life is having a righteous wife when this verse fi ma akhraja at-tirmidhi fi as-sunan min hadith thawban radiyallahu an was revealed wal ladina yaknizuna adh-dhahaba wal fiddata wa la yunfiqunaha fi sabilillah and those who collect gold and silver they gather they store it and they do not spend it in the cause of Allah ar rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commented by saying tabban lil dhahab tabban lil fiddah qalaha thalatha curse to gold curse to silver of course if it will not be spent in the cause of Allah then the sahaba came to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said ya rasul allah which wealth should we then take the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells them khayru maktanaz an-nas the best thing that you can have is lisanan shakira lisanan dhakira a tongue that always remembers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa qalban shakira and a heart which is grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa zawjatan mu'mina and a believing wife tu'inuk 
على أمر دنياك وآخرتك Who will help you regarding the affairs of your dunya, your worldly life, your worldly affairs, and she will help you also to get Jannah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, ورد في مستدرك الحاكم حديث سعد بن أبي وقاص رضي الله عنه ثلاثة من السعادة وثلاثة من الشقاوة Three signs of happiness and three signs of miserliness, miserliness whatever the word is trouble three signs of trouble of having a miserable life three signs of having a good life one زوجة مؤمنة صالحة a righteous wife a believing wife and a good means of transportation and a decent house and three signs of of uh, misery that is the word a wife who gives you trouble all the time and a bad means of transportation breaks all the time and a house that is not comfortable a lot of Muslims brothers and sisters in Islam do compromise the religion of Islam as if the religion came to give you trouble. الدين جاء لسعادة البشر. This religion came to give you happiness. And I'm telling you, you will never find happiness but after the banner of Islam. And this was made crystal clear. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down Adam and his wife to earth, he said to them, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ الآيات يعني, the meanings. If messengers come to you with a guidance, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى If you follow this guidance, you will never be misguided, nor you will astray. Look at the other end of this. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ And if you turn away from that guidance, you will have a miserable life. There is no good life but under this banner of Islam. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقُ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us. He created us. He knows what can straighten our lives. When we go, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى and buy a car. The manufacturer gives you a blueprint, a manuscript. Every 300 miles, change the oil. If you want that car to last, not to give you trouble, follow these instructions. Allah made you and me. And before He made us, He already designed. He already Created, he already designed the guidance which will help us. Ar Rahman Allam al Quran Khalaq al Insan. But we fall in trouble, we get in trouble because we compromise the teachings of Islam. It's very unfortunate, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, 
that our religion is turning to be a color which we color ourselves with when we need. When there is death, let's color the whole thing with religion. When there is marriage, let's get that religion going. When there is something, let's get whenever you want to put it on. But the majority of the time, we don't even try to find out what Allah said. And we start complaining afterwards. Allah ya ikhwah, by Allah, you cannot imagine the amount of problems we have in our homes. A lot of problems. Wives calling cops on their husbands, husbands beating their wives, divorce rate is skyrocketing. They tell you every six minutes in the Muslim world, there is one case of divorce. Every six minutes. Why? Because we compromise the teachings. I always like to use this statement as an example. Hadith. Salman al-Farisi, when a non-Muslim said to him, well, hadith fi Muslim, يقول له, دينكم يعلمكم كل شيء حتى الخراءة. Your religion teaches you every little thing, even how to go to the bathroom. How to relieve yourself? What is this? Yes, he tells him yes. And he actually told him, what does the messenger say about relieving yourself? You think Islam ignored putting two lives together? No. في الصحيحين من حديث Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says tunkahu al-mar'atu li arba' a woman is seeked in marriage because of four incentives there are four things which can move you to propose to marry a woman Number one, Jamaliha, her physical beauty. Maliha, her wealth. She has a good job. She has a good education, potential. Hasabiha, her lineage, her family. Wadiniha, and her religion. Four. Which one, Ya Rasulullah, should I go for? He did not say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, marry. You know what he said? Fazfar, win. He did not say marry, the religious. He said, win, the religious one. Win her. As if, they will not be plenty of them. And you may have actually to keep looking and looking until you find her. But don't compromise this advice. فَاغْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكِ There is a lot of ways the scholars explained the term تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكِ but there is an odd explanation that I like to present, which is if you do not choose the righteous, the religious women, you will put sand over your head. A little odd, but that explanation is in the books, but very odd one.
but so true. And ask those who are suffering, they will tell you. They walk in the streets speaking to themselves. كَلِّمْ نَفْسَ الرَّجُلِ Why? لِإِنِّ الْبِيْتِ سَكَنْ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The nature of the house, of the home, is a place that you go there, you find rest, tranquility, peace. You run away from the fitna. You run away from the jungle in the outside. You escape the trials and tribulations inside. What if this house is not? That is the real misery, brothers and sisters in Islam. I know I'm addressing already married brothers. I'm also addressing brothers who may not be married yet, or even youth who are not at the age of marriage. But bear with me and I will try to, inshallah, fit everybody in that little talk today. The question here, what is the wisdom? Why should you choose a righteous woman? You know reason number one, which we may not even think about. Before you choosing a wife for yourself, you choosing a mother for your children. This is the cornerstone of marriage. The only way in Islam to have offspring is to marry. Now, marriage is the process which will produce the next generation. Now when you go and propose and choose a wife, you ever think about your children? You ever think? And I say this to a lot of the brothers who rush into marrying kitabiyat, people of the book. Listen, we can stand here and debate this. It's permissible with limitations, with some restrictions. But what if divorce takes place? What is going to happen to your children? Have you ever thought about this? Brothers and sisters in Islam, Subhanallah, and this is just a similitude. And that similitude was used in the Quran. The wife is like earth, where you're supposed to place a seed. When you want to plant a tree in your backyard, don't you go and look for the best piece? An earth that is, doesn't produce, you're not even going to pay a penny for it. Even when you go and buy it, the price goes down. But a woman is the earth where the man places that seed. If the earth is sound, the seed will grow. And a lot of time, a lot of the brothers would come and ask me, Shaykh, how can I figure out whether this woman I want to propose to is righteous or not. I tell him there are a lot of factors. And I share this with him. But I tell him, look at her mother. See how her mother is. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is reason number one. And subhanallah, this verse 
in Surah Al-Hajj. Ya ayyuhal nasu in kuntum fi raybin min al-ba'th fa inna khalaqnakum min turab thumma min nutfa thumma min alaqa thumma min mudghatin mukhallaqatin wa ghayri mukhallaqa linubayyin lakum wa nuqirru fi al-arham ma nasha'u ila ajalin musamma thumma nukhrijukum tiflan thumma litablughu ashuddakum al-aya look at the end of this verse this is the famous verse which has the stages of the creation of a baby inside the womb of a mother. The embryo. Look. وَتَرَى الْأَرْضَ هَامِدَةً فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءِ اِهْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ Then at the end of this verse, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a sperm, then a piece of a flesh, then the soul, then coming out. Look, this is exactly like earth. You place a seed there and rain comes down, will grow. That is reason number one, brothers and sisters in Islam. Children. Second reason, brothers and sisters in Islam. Marriage is tough. It's not easy. Forget about these soap, op soap operas or soap operas that we, we were brought up with. They got married and they lived happily ever after. This is not accurate. Two individuals coming together, two different souls, a lot of challenges. And the head of the institution of disbelief is after your marriage. And I'm amazed at this hadith. Hadith Jadir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhumah. Wal hadith fi sahih al-imam muslim. Iblis kulla yaw yada arshahu ala al-ma. Every single day in the morning, Satan places his throne in water. Shaitan, the big guy, the guy who doesn't die, the guy who refused to bow down to Adam. Every day, he's the head of this belief in earth. Every day. And all these little jinni, those whom he was able to misguide from his race, will report to him. And he will say the following to them, مَنْ أَضَلَّ الْيَوْمَ مُسْلِمًا أَلْبَسْتُهُ التَّاجِ Whoever does the best job today in misguiding a Muslim, I will crown him with my own hands. Disperse, go work, get to work. Every single day he does this. He is more punctual than us. At sunset, again his throne is in water. And they come reporting their accomplishment for the day. Listen, one of them will say, I did good today, I was able to get somebody to drink, to smoke, to kill, you name it. To commit adultery, you name it. For all of those, he would say, good job, good job, good job. Until this one stands and says, I did not leave a husband and wife until I separated them. I kept, I kept getting them in trouble. I kept whispering to her, whispering to them, getting them angry at one another. Calling one another names until they finally divorced. Guess what? He will say, Ni'ma ant, anta ant. You are my man. Come. The crown goes to this one. Why, brothers and sisters in Islam? When divorce is lawful, هذا الحديث لا يرفع للنبي. 
أبغض الحلال عند الله الطلاق لا يصح للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The most hated halal to Allah is divorce is not authentic. الحديث مرسل. You could divorce مرأة صوامة قوامة. You could divorce a woman who is righteous and pious. No problem. But why he was so happy about because when you divorce you see like marriage place two families together joined two families together maybe one from the east one from the west together he's my father-in-law he's my brother-in-law Exactly divorce does the contrary, the opposite. Breaks. Oh, they are weird, bad family. Terrible. They mistreated our women. Oh, the father-in-law, oh, he did this and this. And this. A lot of fitna. Add to this, when we insist on going to a court and not seeking the remedy in our own communities, Amongst our elders, asking an old brother who is wise to come and intervene. No, we rush to the court. Lawyers, fees, money. But in my humble opinion, the most devastating element here, when there are children. And these children here, the mother talking ill about the father. Oh, he's terrible. He's awful. He is this. And the children are hearing that. And the same thing goes if the father speaks about the mother. One of the most amazing things that happened. I had a friend in, back in Egypt and I know that he divorced his wife. I called him the other day and then he tells me I'm going to Hajj inshallah I'm hoping to see you I'm going to Hajj with my father-in-law I know that he's not married your father-in-law oh I'm sorry my ex-father-in-law you're going to Hajj with your ex-father-in-law yes why not we still have good relation I divorced his daughter, but yet we still have good relation. But no, we are Muslims. When we divorce, destroy everything, everything. Wallahi brothers, I don't want to speak. Every, if the sister can, if the brother can, they will do it. He divorced his daughter and he's going to hajj with him. Why not? لا allegations he beats me and he never laid a hand on her or he stole this when he never did that or the brother that goes with the brothers too I want to be equal here and I'm sorry if I have missed a chance to be equal it goes both ways when there is a divorce guess who pays the price the children and you end up with weaker generations and these weaker generations become a good hunt for Satan you see Satan is very strategic he thinks ahead of time a generation that is the harvest of a separated father and mother are weaker to misguide to take astray. The third reason, brothers and sisters in Islam, and I'm gonna have to just mention those because of the sake of time. And please understand this in light of the religion of Islam, not in light of the West and their approach, and the fact they promote that Islam has an equal approach once it comes to men and women. The point that I'm trying to make, but I will present that point to you. 
after sharing with you something that happened at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Battle of Uhud. You know quite well what happened on this day. Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam placed fifty archers on the top of a hill in order to protect the back of the Muslim army. And he said to them, don't leave your post. Don't leave your position. Don't, please. You harm us. You will harm the whole ummah if you leave that post. They decided to leave the harm befall the Muslims. You know what I'm trying to say? A righteous woman knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her the mother for the child. She will not give any precedence, any priority over the task. A lot of our mothers, because they want to go out there and compete with the men in the field of, in the jungle, compete with them, she would leave her children to a babysitter. Listen, I'm very reasonable. I understand that a lot of families now, and this is the way that is set, cannot make it without two incomes. I understand this. But I'm telling you, dear mother, no one can bring your child up better than you. Dear husband, if you're longing to the paycheck of your, of your wife, your child is paying the price. Your child is needing a mother. Figure out a way where you can be the qayyim, you can be the provider. Look into your internet bill, look into your dish bill, look into your satellite, look into your... If you sit and do some math, you may be able to spare your wife to stay as a mother for your children. But I'm telling you, one of the most devastating things that are happening to our Muslim children, the mothers are leaving home and they are going outside to compete with men. I know of mothers who go out to work and they make the minimum wage. Their bi-weekly check is not enough to pay the babysitter. And guess what? The babysitter is not a Muslim. The daycare is not a Muslim. So here is a Muslim mother paying an un-Muslim mother to bring up her children. Doesn't click. And that is why I'm telling you, mothers are leaving their post, their positions. Why? Because they want to be like men. When Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them in the Quran, Wala tatamannaw ma faddala Allahu bihi ba'dakum ala ba'd lil rijali nasibun mimma iktasabu wa lil nisa'i nasibun mimma iktasab. If you are a man, don't wish to be a woman. If you are a woman, don't wish to be a man. This is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, we should go for righteous and pious wives if you are not married. What you are married, what if you are married? One word, fix yourself. Fix your iman and give your wife a da'wah and she will follow you. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum.
الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله An Arab father said the following to his son who is about to get married. He said to him, لا تتزوج الحنانة المنانة الأنانة الحداقة الشداقة البراقة اللئيمة لا تتزوج الحنانة Don't marry a woman who always longs to her family home and she reminds you saying I had a better life with my family than you or if she was married before she will long to her ex Don't She would speak about him She's always comparing the life which you're providing with the life that you have. Hanana. Manana. Don't marry a woman who can do a favor for you, but then she will remind you of it when she needs to. Remember that day I bought you a gift. Al Anana. The one who whines, moans, complains about her health. Even so, she is healthy. Al Haddaqa, Al Shaddaqa, Al Barraqa. Al Haddaqa, when she walks, she sees an object in the mall. Wallah, I'm not going home without buying it. Even if this is going to drive the whole family bankrupt. Ashaddaqa excessively speaks. Al Barraqa, she spends the majority of her, of her time in front of the mirror to look shiny. Al Laima, she's ungrateful to you. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is important that we go back to the deen in this area in particular and look for those righteous women who are very rare at this time, uneasy to find, but don't compromise it. In closing, I want to say the hadith which I started the khutbah with, hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu anhuma, in a wording with Imam al-Nasai, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned some of the qualities of this righteous woman. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-dunya mata'a, the worldly life is an enjoyment. وَخَيْرُ مَتَاعِهَا الزَّوْجَ الصَّالِحَةِ And the best of the enjoyments is righteous wife. He said, إِذَا نَظَرْتَ إِلَيْهَا أَسَرَّتْكَ When you look at her, she pleases you. She's always positive, ongoing. She takes care of herself. She doesn't beautify herself for the people outside. Rather, she beautifies herself for her husband. وَإِذَا أَقْسَمْتَ عَلَيْهَا أَبَرَّتْكَ When you tell her to do something, taking an oath, she will help you honor and fulfill that oath. وَإِذَا غِبْتَ عَنْهَا حَفِظَتْكَ And when you leave home for a while, you have no doubt in your heart that she will guard herself, she will be chaste, and she will guard your wealth. 
I may be in the American society be aggressive here against women and I'm talking about men and what men should get and all of this but in two minutes or so I want to say dear sisters your husband is your way to Jannah hadith في مسند أحمد the narrator is Abu Hurairah وصحيح ابن حبان the narrator is Abdullah Abdurrahman ibn Awf listen to this dear sisters before you pass any judgment over the talk the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says إذا صلت المرأة خمسها if a woman prays her five daily prayers وصامت شهرها and she fasts the month of Ramadan وحصنت فرجها and she kept herself chaste وأطاعت زوجها and she obeyed her husband in the day of resurrection she gets to choose which of the eight gates of Jannah she wants to enter we're after Jannah sisters you're after Jannah, sisters. Allahumma gfil lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa arzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila wa arzuqna ajtinaba Allahumma gfil lana dunubana wa arhamna birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi li wa lakum wa aqim as-salah